So today I'm going to talk about a little bit about the introduction of the tower, just to give you some uh, brief uh, uh, items and stats about the project, but also to uh, show you some of the challenges that we were confronted with when we when we looked at the, at the tower. And I want to focus mostly on the integration of architecture and engineering. Uh, without the integration and the collaboration of, of both of those, which is really the ethos of our firm and a uh, uh, long-standing tradition of our firm, the building probably could not have been done. Uh, the locations in Dubai, for those of you who don't know Dubai, give, give you a rough sense of where it is. It's, it's uh, about 17 kilometers from, uh, from the center of the new Dubai, which is centered around uh, Burj Khalifa in the, in the Marina District, the uh, uh, Dubai Marina District. Now, the, the Dubai Marina was one of the first major uh, developments in Dubai. When we went there, there was nothing there, and we were started talking about uh, Burj, uh, Burj Khalifa, but when, there was nothing there at all. But now it's become uh, a, very, a, a big uh, center uh, focus of uh, a development, and it's probably one of the densest places that I've ever been, even more dense than I think uh, in New York. The location is a very prime site, located on the on the on the north end of the the marina, and affords very uh, great views. You can see by looking at this photograph, which is uh, which is uh, frames the kind of the entrance to the into the marina from the, from the Gulf. It also stands apart from the rest of the context a little bit, and really sets it apart. The tower itself uh, started in April of 2005 as a design competition and uh, completed in the 2013 uh, last year. Its use is residential, it's 1,000 feet, uh, 73 stories, and uh, 122,000 square meters. It's already been re recognized with uh, several design awards as well, and we, we believe it's the tallest twisting building in the, in the world. When I say twisting, the truly, tw truly twisting. Uh, the design competition was a paid competition and started in February and ended in, in May of 2005 and you can see some of the architects that were involved. And the, the brief uh, was very simple in that they wanted a 65-story condominium building um, which, which they wanted to become an, a landmark and icon in, in Dubai. And I, I, I've always said from the beginning that it, it became that um, next to Burj and um, Burj Al Arab in, in Dubai. We submitted three schemes, one, only one was twisting. All had the same kind of basic uh, vocabulary in terms of the architectural skin. But as we went into it, went and, and got selected to do the work, uh, the client selected the twisted tower as one to pursue. The design goals in the beginning were, were, were very simple. To create an iconic form, the site itself demanded something that was uh, very special, uh, and create a landmark within the marina, which has become and, took f and take full advantage of the site uh, prominence in terms of views and, and, and uh, views of the building itself. Now, now the, co the complex parts of this building are, 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 are a wide range, but I'll, I'll focus on a few of, uh, of them and show you how we kind of solve those, those issues. The first one was arch the architecture. When you twist this, when you take a, a, a series of columns and you tr in a building and you try to twist them, you'll, s you'll see that the columns all of a sudden start sw sloping in three directions. Now when that happens, there, uh, you get things like parallelograms for windows and things like that, which don't necessarily work. Uh, the columns are, are, are sloping uh, from a structural standpoint and accommodate the twist, but, the, but uh, as you know, columns like to be somewhat vertical, Bill tells me all the time, and, and if you start t t tilting them in, and tilting them in two or three directions, they, they don't act and behave as you, you'd want them to. And then the third, the third major issue was the distribution of mechanical systems. As you, as you, tw as you twist the building, how, how do you get pipes to go straight up and down, especially uh, gr gravity type uh, uh, service pipes? And uh, uh, Anthony talked about the twisted towers that you've seen. There's all kinds of different shapes and sizes that have been uh, looked at uh, uh, over the years, and especially in Dubai, where it seems to be a little bit more experimental, but and in, and in Asia a little bit. But if you take a closer look at these buildings, you can see how they may have solved the structure or may not have solved the structure. And some it's very very apparent. And, and you look when we when we looked at the at the twist of the building, we really wanted to make it a regular floor plan, um, and we came up with a, basically a square shape with a, a cylindrical core, not not unlike a spindle with paper uh, going through it. Some of the other tw uh, twisting towers in, in the diagram on the on the left side, you'll see is more of an appendage onto a structure that goes straight up and down. Now what what that does is it it creates a different floor plan for every floor. 
we have w we had basically one floor plan that, that went up and down uh, up and down the building, uh, so that that, uh, that complicates things in turn uh, the, the the one where the appendage goes around really complicates things in terms of constructability. Um, in uh, in ours, we use the same formwork uh, systems on every floor, in, 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 and in even more simple terms, same, sometimes things that we don't think about. The marketing people at uh, Cayenne loved us because they had one simple floor plan that was relatively flexible in terms of apartment layouts. The other ones, the, the, the appendage gave you, the, uh, again, a different floor plate on every floor. The, the twist itself was uh, after a few iterations of looking at how much twist and how much le how, how least of a twist we should do, we all settled on a, a full 90 degree twist. Uh, this, this was, uh, we went through a series of both visual and uh, structural engineering studies to make sure that that was uh, able to be done. And we, we, you know, the, a lot of the buildings that are corkscrewed don't, really don't look as, as good. We tried to look for a simple, elegant twist from top to bottom. Now, as, as I mentioned before, in, in this blue shaded area, um, if you take the, the, the columns in the building and just twist them, you get these columns that really are, 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 t are, t are tilted, both in the in inward and outward direction, depending where you are in the, in the twist of the building. In fact, the, the corners, the, when you twist the, if you, if you take a, a, maybe a foam, a piece of foam or something like that that's, that's uh, somewhat pliable, and you twist it, you'll see that the corners of the building go, start going over the footprint of the, of the, of the, uh, the tower itself. In this case, where we're, we had a very tight site, we found the, the building actually over, overhung the site and had to get special approvals from the city to, in order to do that. So one of the, the things we started looking at is Bill and his team looked at two uh, studies. Now th these represent, uh, are very di diagrammatic, but there's uh, the, the one on the left is uh, a twisted scheme with the tilted columns, and the other one is using what we started to uh, call the stepped column. And both, in both cases, the same load was applied in the computer and with the same member sizes, and you can see at the bottom what, what the deflections were. Uh, so it was a very easy decision for us to make as to which direction we should be going. So the stepped uh, column scheme became the, uh, something that we used as, uh, as, we, as we went forward. Now, we, we, we like this uh, the basic idea of the it really come, becomes a hybrid because even though we eliminated one, t one uh, tilt, in the columns, as they, like I said, they would still uh, tilt in and out depending on where, where they are. But it still gave us a very repeatable floor plan. It, it made the exterior wall uh, uh, panels and, and system very simple. This is basically an inf infill panel, became very economical with cladding on the columns and a screen system that I'll show you later. The also, the larger footprint of, of, of the tower, with all, most of the load of the tower being out to the perimeter, um, it gave them a larger footprint for stability uh, reasons, and also the constructability and repetition in, involved in having the same footprint and same floor plate and same uh, formwork all the way up became uh, a plus as the, the, the owner uh, pr uh, priced out the project. Uh, th this is a series of diagrams that kind of show you what happens to the columns on every floor. There's always an overlap. Bill, Bill t tells me that's really very similar to a pile cap, that the columns really kind of move around a little bit on a pile cap, and the load's always distributed down through the pile. Well, we have these kind of, kind of pile caps at almost every floor, and you can see those happening at every floor and how the step columns work. You really don't get a sense of the step when you look at the tower because it be the overall form itself is, is really twisting. But if you overlaid what a twisted tower looked like, you could see these parallelograms that might be warped and twisted uh, uh, in the infill areas where the uh, glass would go. And in, in managing the wind, um, the tower itself is inherently uh, uh, very good in that it confuses the wind all the way up to the top of the tower. Each floor rotates a, a little over a degree each, so it, it, each response, the wind response of the, the floor is, is very different at every floor. And in, in it's, it acts very much the same as a strake would on a chimney. So our, our basic system, structural system for, for the tower is this cylindrical core that go, is the only vertical element in the, in the, in the whole tower. Uh, the per perimeter columns, which are stepping uh, and, and going along with the twist, and uh, a few interior columns that actually moved uh, around with the, with the exterior. Now, the, cl the cladding systems uh, were, uh, were simple infill pa panels. 
and we uh, took full advantage of the fact that there were the columns on the, uh, of the columns on the outside to uh, represent solid portions of the building, but then took the glass line and, and set it back because the, uh, the, one of the brief uh, requirements was was balconies, and also added uh, another layer of architecture on the outside, which is uh, our interpretation of a mashrabia, which is a privacy screen that uh, you see in uh, traditional um, Middle Eastern architecture. And then you can see the setbacks. These are the, the, actually the setbacks are a little bit deeper than that, but you get the, you kind of get the idea. Now, each one of the floor plates are have uh, was very flexible in terms of the apartment mix itself. Uh, and uh, as I said before, there was easy to repeat floors and easy to, to develop uh, marketing plans to to do that. The top floors are a couple uh, penthouse floors, which are still for sale if anybody wants one. Now, the, the MEP distribution was, was the other issues that we, we dealt with uh, that was, uh, we, we knew in a traditional apartment building, you couldn't have the pipes going straight down, stacking on top of, of, of each other, going up and down through other units. So all, all of the services basically re, uh, fetch back to the core itself. Uh, so outside uh, air and supply return, uh, chilled water and the potable water supplies all go back to the core in some fashion, either to the core wall itself or to actual uh, chases inside the core. When we did the study, we, we, uh, the, the obvious question is, well, isn't it that more expensive than, than doing it vertically? We found that it was the, the difference of going horizontal, depending on where you located the, the bathrooms and kitchens, was fairly minimal in terms of... Uh, a horizontal or a full vertical system. Now, some of the, the uh, strategies that we had uh, that were inherent in, in, the, in the building was the fact that the building is self-shaded. As soon as we set back the glass area, took advantage of the, uh, the deep overhangs of the structure and added our, our mashrabia, coupled along with the twist, it became a, a very much a, a self-shaded system. And when you think about uh, the twisted tower itself, and if you don't twist the tower, you, 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 you can imagine uh, the sun hitting one full elevation of the building. And if, but, but if you twist it, you get three conditions. You get a part of the facade, only a part of the facade that's, uh, that's really fully engaged with the sun. You get the middle portion, which is the twist, which is on oblique all of a sudden, and being shaded because of the, 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 the setback of the glass. And then you get the, the top which is probably uh, in total shade. So depending on when the sun is, that, that happens on every facade. So it's, it's really a fraction uh, of, the, uh, of the total uh, um, solar gain that you could have. The other thing we checked, uh, and this is only a few months ago we checked this, is we, the uh, Dubai uh, municipality came out with their green building um, uh, code and we checked this building against that code and we exceeded the code in pr pr pretty much every cate category. And this was done back in 2005, before the code came out. The, the, the other part of this is we, we do have um, uh, uh, some, op we have operable windows in the, in the building to allow fresh air in. And uh, one of the things that, uh, it, uh, that the, the twist does is it shields it from the wind in a certain way. Certain times the atmosphere is full of sand. And the sand there is not like the granular sand that we see out here at Oak Street Beach, but it's more of a, of a very fine talcum powdery sand. So it's really airborne a lot of the time when the, when the wind kicks up, especially when the, the winds come off the desert. So to guard, uh, the, 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 the twisting shape helps uh, guard against that as well. And, and uh, part of the natural ventilation scheme was a, <clears throat> was a night purging uh, and an natural ventilation, which can happen uh, about, I would say, almost half of the year, and it's just starting to turn nice in Dubai. And in fact, the times in, in Dubai, you can see your breath outside, it gets so cool. So, so it's really uh, became a marketing um, a plus for the client when they're selling units. Other more high performance and active strategies include uh, one of the, the key ones was the heat recovery from toilet exhaust to reduce oper operational energy costs. And that was d done, done using a energy recovery wheel. Um, now, because the building is so unique in its structure, uh, the, build, the building was monitored, uh, the mo building movements were monitored from day one uh, under construction. Uh, and uh, as it turns out, uh, all, all the predicted values that Bill and his team uh, came up with were very close to what was actually monitored. So the, the, the monitoring doesn't uh, take, 
uh, take place anymore, and the, the building seems to be working uh, quite well. Uh, the rest of these are, are uh, photographs and some views of, uh, of the tower. Do I get a credit for going so fast, by the way? Yeah. Um, but the, you, can see, you can see some of these columns that, that are tilting in an inside and out, and depending on where your, your uh, apartment is, the vertical face of the interior, the, uh, the interior face of the uh, exterior columns is vertical so that you have some semblance of stability inside the building, but the, but the actual uh, uh, inward, outward of the outward piece is, uh, is, is there, and so you get a sense of the tilt and where you are. And one thing to, to note, you can see here as the, as the light hits the building, you can see how the, how, how the, the light changes on the building, which is part of this, uh, uh, of the self-shading aspect of it. In this case, it's lit, it's the hot spots at the top of the building, and then it, 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 it goes away to uh, darkness to, at the bottom. Thank you.